Today's video is part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip Challenge playlist. We will be talking about that a little more in just a bit. For now, let's get started. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this limb that my husband trimmed off one of the trees in our yard. I love taking things that look like trash and turn them into beautiful pieces, and I knew we could use this for a centerpiece. I'm also going to use this grapevine wreath that I got from the thrift store. I cut the little binds off of it and put it in water and soaked it for 24 hours to make it where it's not brittle some floral foam from the Dollar Tree, some sheet moss from Walmart, some flowers and some greenery from Dollar General. These were a dollar each. Some adhesive cork from the Dollar Tree. This bunny figurine that I got from Hobby Lobby in the Easter section and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So when I went outside and my husband was trimming the limbs off of this tree, I loved this piece that he had cut down. I knew I could take it and I had this idea to make like a ditch in the top of it and put florals in it. Now I took it to the shed and I used my handsaw and I worked on it for about an hour and a half. But this thing is green and it is tough. I was able to make little slits in the bark and then I used a chisel and chipped those away and then I used um, a hand sander and sanded it down flat to make a flat surface to work on. But honestly you can do this without doing that. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of my cork sheet and I'm going to cut a strip off the bottom and then I'll peel off the back and stick it onto my log. This is going to keep it from scratching my table when it's sitting on it. If you don't have this, you could really use felt for it. I'm going to take one of my blocks of floral foam and I cut it in half and I'm going to glue one end on each end of my little ditch I made there. Now how much you use just depends on how big you want to make your piece. I had a section in the center that was blank so I took an old piece I had left over from something else and I kind of pieced it together and filled it in. It doesn't matter what it looks like you're not going to see it. Now I'm going to take my sheet moss and this stuff is messy and I'm going to put a lot of hot glue on top of my foam and then just glue it right on top. It overhangs a little bit and this is all I had so what I did was I would tear off the pieces from the bottom and then I'd use hot glue and piece them all the way around. I'm going to put a lot on there to hold this until I get everything covered. Now that my little foam is covered I'm going to take my grapevine pieces. I trim off the ends of this so that they're flat and then I just use some hot glue and I glue it down into my foam. I put a drop on the end and I stick it down in there and I'm making like an arch. I love how this looked. Then I'll take some more pieces of my grapevine wreath and I just trim off the ends, stick them down into my foam and I kind of wrap it around that little arch that I made. Just don't be too rough with it because you don't want to rip it out of your foam. I keep going until I get it as thick as I want it and I like how it looks. I love the rustic look of this grapevine wreath. Now we're going to take our little bunny and figure out where we want him and then use some hot glue and glue him down. I put him at the base of my arch. Then I'm going to take my greenery and some of my flowers and I just start clipping them off and sticking them down around the base of my arch. I do put some hot glue on some of them and glue them on there where I cut off the back of it. I'm just wanting to build this up till I like how it looks and that's the beauty of these. You turn it into what you like. We'll just keep building up our flowers and our greenery on each side. I like to twist some of them into the grapevine so it looks like it grew that way. And then once you get all your florals on here, this project is complete. Hey 
y'all, it's Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. We are so excited to be launching our new monthly challenge, the Thrift Flip Road Trip, with our friend Teresa from Our Green Acres. Each month, we will be challenging other channels to repurpose old thrifted items in their projects. You can get these thrifted items from a store, the roadside, or just something you already own that needs freshening up and updating. We will have a link to the playlist in the description box below. When you finish our video, go over and check out all of the other amazing creators and their projects. Don't forget to check out Teresa's channel either. She is the queen of all things shabby chic and we know you are going to love her just as much as we do. If you are new and coming over from the playlist, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release new videos each week. We're sure you can find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's, let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. We're so excited for our very first Thrift Flip Road Trip of 2020. And not only that, we get to do it together. For this project, we're going to use this bread box that we found at Goodwill for $5.99. It was in really good shape and we had an idea to transform it. We're also going to use four spindles that we got from Habitat for Humanity for $2, a piece of plywood that I stole from my husband's stash, a little girl's dress from Goodwill Outlet for $0.50, cent, a footstool from Dollar Tree Plus for $5, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white, Hippo water slide decal paper, some floral graphics that we got from Creative Fabrica, some clear acrylic matte coating to seal our graphics with. You're going to do three coats and let it dry for 10 minutes in between each. The straight top plate hardware from Lowe's, some wood screws, my heavy duty staple gun, and some wood glue. The first thing we wanted to do was our prep. We're going to take our spindles outside and we're going to cut them down to 18 inches. These are going to be the legs for our desk and since it's for my granddaughter, we needed them to be shorter. We're going to take our bread box and sand it down and take off as much of the paint as we can so we don't have to use so many coats of paint. Now that everything is prepped, we've cut our legs, we cut down our plywood to 17 by 22, and we sanded our bread box. We're going to give everything two good coats of our Rust-Oleum chalk paint and leave it to dry. Now I'm going to take apart this little girl's dress. I'm taking the band off the bottom and then I'm going to separate the skirt. Actually, I'm going to remove all of the pink and white fabric because we're going to utilize as much of this as possible to cover our stool and to decorate with. As you notice here, we painted our legs also in that white Rust-Oleum paint and now we're going to cover it. I'm going to pull the two tight places first and staple it down and then I just start pulling up the remaining sides and I staple it really close together because I want to make sure this is nice and tight and once I'm finished with that I'm just going to come back with my scissors and give it a good trimming. Now I'm going to place this band on the bottom to decorate my stool. I'm going to turn it upside down and staple it across the bottom very closely together, but I'm also going to make sure I'm at the same height each time as I move around this stool. There is wood at the bottom of the stool, so it holds on very nicely, y'all. And when you get to the end, you just cut it off, fold it over, staple it again, and I did use a hot glue gun to secure it as well. Fold that down and it looked perfect. Now I'm going in and I'm going to cut off the collar as well because I have another idea to decorate this stool. We're going to take that collar and make a flower out of it. But it was a little bit too wide so I decided to glue it down in half. I'm just using hot glue going around that edge and pressing it down and since it was a ruffle it kind of ruffles it out as you go. Now to make flour we're going to put a little bit of hot glue on one end and you're going to start rolling it in. You want to keep it tight at the very beginning but then as you go out you're going to loosen it up and this is going to form your flour. 
Once we get down there close to the end, we'll use a little bit of hot glue and secure it, and we have a flower. We're going to use some hot glue on the back of it and glue it onto our stool, covering up the seam. Y'all know that we're a little bit extra, so I grabbed some of these pearls from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to glue one right into the center of it. Then we're going to take some of this pearl bead trim that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale for $1.50, and we're just going to go right around our stool, hot gluing it on, and cover up that seam. This gives it the perfect touch. Now let's work on our bread box. Kay and I took these little decals and we cut them out individually. Then we just kind of placed them on top of our bread box and figured out where we wanted them to be. Once we were happy with how it looked, we're going to start working with the water slide. All you do for this is put it in your water and you're going to let it soak for about 35 to 40 seconds. You'll know it's ready when you feel it start moving across the top. If you leave it too long, it actually separates. Once you get that ready, you're going to put it on your project. Make sure you wet the surface a little bit. And then you hold it with one finger and slide the paper out with the other one. Once it's on there, position it where you want it. And then take a paper towel and blot the top of it until you get the water off. And there it is. I thought this project looked just a little too perfect. So I grabbed my Ballet Slipper Pink Paint and I'm just going to use a stencil brush and go right around those edges and over the slats. I'm going to hit the sides and the back and just kind of distress it with our pink paint. In the areas where I felt like it got a little bit too heavy, I used some white. Now we're going to also do the same thing to the base of our desk so that it'll match. We'll go around the edges and just kind of distress the top as well. For our legs, since we're keeping this as thrift as possible, we're using these spindles, but we have to attach them. So we're going to drill a hole in the center of each one. Then we'll use a wood screw and we're going to screw this straight top plate onto it. This is going to make our project really sturdy. If you didn't have it, it would be really wobbly. We'll do this for all four of our legs. And now we can attach them to the top of our desk. I turned it over so that the bottom was up, but my plywood is just thin enough that the screws would pop through the top. So we grabbed these little thin wood discs from Walmart, and I had to make a hole in the middle to accommodate the screw in the middle of our spindle there. But we're going to put some hot glue on the bottom, use a little bit of wood glue on there as well, and then we're going to stick one in each corner. And this makes it just thick enough that our screws won't go all the way through now. I'm going to hold my leg there and mark where all the screws are going to go. Then I'm going to use my drill and make some pilot holes in each one. Now we'll just take our legs, put them where the pilot holes are, and we're going to screw them on. Once we get all these legs on here, the only thing we have left to do is attach our bread box to the top to make our roll top desk. We're going to flip this over. I can't show it on camera because it's so tall you can't see it, but literally we just flipped it over, used some wood glue to attach it, and then stuck a couple of screws through the bottom to secure it, and this project was finished. Hey, I don't usually come on on this channel and talk to you about a project as I'm doing it, but I did want to come on and talk to you about this frame. I got it at the Goodwill Outlet in Columbus, Georgia. Then I moved it to Alabama with me, and then I moved it all the way out to New Mexico with me, and I've been waiting to redo it. Thrift Flip Road Trip is the perfect time to take that project on, I felt like. It has a piece in the middle here. This is something someone added. The frame came open or either with a piece of glass in it, I'm guessing, because of the little hooks that are here on the back. I'm assuming it had something flat in here originally and that they added this cross detail coming down. 
I think we can remake this piece with a little paint and a little ribbon and so forth and we can make this a beautiful project. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to be using a piece of this leftover pink organza ribbon that was used in another project. I'm going to be using one of these wooden crosses from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of six and they were 50% off last week. A scrap piece of burlap fabric. One 8x10 painting canvas. My furniture repair markers in the color Mahogany and Cherry. I got these at the Dollar Tree. White Waverly chalk paint. Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. Flat acrylic paint in the color Territorial Beige. And finally, my heavy duty stapler and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was deconstruct the frame. I'm taking off this ribbon. I'm going to reuse that cross. I'm going to pop out the frame in the back. It is a canvas frame. And then I'm going to return that to the thrift store. I first started out, y'all, by taping off the gold parts, the inner ring and the one in between the two black ones. And then I gave it a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint that was watered down. I wanted to give it a whitewash effect. But... I'm going to tell you here, don't do this. This is not what you should do, or at least if you have this frame. This did not work out, and when I removed the tape, I was not happy with the result. I used that watered-down Waverly White chalk paint, and I'm going in and painting that little brown cross, and I'll come back and kind of take some of it off so that it looks like rust coming through the paint. And I did really like the effect. And if I got it on the stones, well, I just wiped that off and it wasn't a problem at all. For my cross, I'm going to cover the hole at the top. I'm just going to use a little wood filler. It is stainable and paintable. And then we'll just let that dry. And once it does, I'm going to come in with my cherry marker. And I'm going to stain, first of all, the word faith with the cherry marker. Then I'm going to come in with the mahogany marker and I'm going to stain the edge and the front of the cross with the mahogany marker. I'm going to cover my 8x10 frame. I'm just using that burlap and a heavy duty stapler and I'm just going to tuck it at the ends and make it look as neat as possible. But that will now be our background. And then I sanded my cross and made sure the wood filler was nice and flat and then I'm coming in with my second marker, which is the mahogany stain. And here you can see that I finally do stain the entire cross. And then I thought my cross needed a little more contrast. So I came in with some watered down Waverly white chalk paint, and I'm just using a baby wipe to apply it and give it kind of a whitewashed effect. And it actually gave it kind of a pink color. Now I'm taking off that tape that I showed you earlier and I said you don't want to do it this way if you have this frame. And once I did, I noticed that I didn't like the way it looked. So I got out my new really good Waverly White chalk paint and I gave this frame two good coats so that I had really good coverage. This frame had some really neat edges around the outside edge and the inside edge, and it was kind of a deckled effect, but once I painted it, it lost some of that character. So what I'm going to do is go in with my territorial beige, and I'm just going to put a little wash on those features so that they'll be highlighted a little bit. It'll just look a little bit antique. I used a baby wipe to wipe off what I didn't like and then I kept the part that I did like and I just continually moved around the frame until I had it exactly like I wanted it. I'm going to take my organza ribbon and string it through my cross and we'll tie a cute little bow at the end and then just reattach it to our frame. And although I didn't show it here, I did use a little hot glue at the top of the frame to make sure it stayed securely in place and I didn't have to worry about it wobbling around. Then I'm just going to pop back in that 8x10 canvas, use a little hot glue to make sure it stays secure. Then I'm going to take hot glue and secure my cross right down to the middle of my piece. And that's pretty much it for this project. so much for joining us today. Please don't forget to click on the link in the description box below and go check out the Thrift Flip Road Trip Challenge playlist to get lots more upcycling inspiration. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. 
We just love hearing from y'all, and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!